Fallujah is the heart of the Sunni Triangle, the area most hostile to US occupation, the crossroads between Baghdad and Jordan, and it was the city of mosques and science. The destruction detailed in a report for the UN's office in Iraq, the UNAMI, dated January 2005, which was for a time kept secret, is described as shocking. Around 37,000 houses are destroyed. The Americans mark with a red cross the cleaned out or disinfected houses as they write in their reports. As for the death toll, there are still no official figures. I can honestly say that I am not aware of any civilian casualty, said US General John Sattler on the 18th of November. These images shot over the days following the attack seem to disprove his theory. The civilian victims were in the hundreds. It is certainly not easy to live in this area if even those waving white flags as a sign of surrender are still shot at. This is my son after the bombing of the Americans in April. His body has started to change. His skull has grown. The bodies of the civilian casualties of women still clutching the misbaba, the Islamic rosary. Their bodies showing strange injuries, some burnt to the bone, others with skin hanging from their flesh. There is no sign of bullet wounds. The faces have literally melted away, just like other parts of the body. The clothes are strangely intact, and so it is easier to distinguish the insurgents who are wearing bulletproof jackets from combatants and civilians. Some animals are also dead without any apparent injury. Footage also documents the disturbing story of the Baghdad, Baghdad Imam Hassan Naomi, wanted and arrested by the new Iraqi militia, trained by the Americans but considered too close to the resistance in Fallujah. Naomi and five others are found dead. The body shows signs of horrific torture, skin scalded from a grill and holes most probably from an electric drill. Shocking methods, they say, used by the secret services of some Middle East countries to extract information. We met Jeff and Garrett, two Marines who both ran an internet site giving information on the war in Iraq. But when secret services found out, it was immediately shut down. They share us material shot in Fallujah with a friend. Garrett, you were a sharp shooter. Did you ever kill any civilians? I have. Yes. When? Uh, during various points in, in Iraq. Uh, most notable was, was basically the... Uh, we did end up killing civilians. I'm not sure who actually it was that, that killed which civilians because there's so much gunfire. But uh, uh, at one point, Khalees was, was under attack, and uh, we responded. We responded to that in a personal security detachment to uh to ride up into Khalees and uh there were there were civilians killed during that attack um basically they were trying to escape Jeff it appears you took part in the attack in November 2004 the most dramatic one were any chemical weapons used in Fallujah from the US military um yeah absolutely uh white phosphorus uh Possibly napalm might, may or may not have been used, I don't know. I do know that white phosphorus was used, which is definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, a chemical weapon. It comes across the radio as a general transmission. They'd say, um, in five mics, we're going to drop some whiskey peat. It just comes across the radio, and like when you hear whiskey peat, that's the military slang. Contrary to what was said by the U.S. State Department, white phosphorus was not used on the open field to illuminate enemy troops. For this, tracer was used. A rain of fire shot from U.S. helicopters on the city of Fallujah on the night of the 8th of November. And we will show you a chemical agent was used in a massive and indiscriminate way in districts of Fallujah. 
In the days that followed, US satellite images showed Fallujah burnt out and raised to the ground. The gases from the warhead, the, the white phosphorus, will disperse in a cloud. And when it makes contact with skin, then it, it's absolutely irreversible damage, burning um, flesh to the bone. Um, it doesn't necessarily burn clothes, but it will burn the skin underneath clothes. And this is why protective masks do not help, because it will burn right through the mask, the rubber of the mask. It will, it will manage to get inside your face. If you breathe it, it will blister your throat and your lungs till you suffocate, and then it will, it will burn you from the inside. Um, it basically reacts to skin, oxygen, and water. Uh, the only way to stop the burning is with wet mud, but at that point, you're, it's just impossible to stop. Have you seen the effects of these weapons? Yes. Burned, burned bodies. I mean... And burn children and burn women. It, it, white phosphorus kills indiscriminately. It, it's a cloud that will, within most cases, to 150 meters of, of impact will, will disperse and it will burn every, every human being or animal. Alice Mahon was a Labour parliamentarian from 1987 until a few months ago until she decided to walk out on Westminster. Mrs Mahon had, since 2003, put forward several parliamentary inquiries demanding information from the Defence Ministry as to whether the United States had used chemical weapons. And the Ministry, after several attempts to deny any knowledge, wrote back on the 13th of June 2005 with the following. I regret to tell you that I am sincerely sorry that this is not the truth and that now we must correct it. The USA destroyed their arsenal of napalm used in Vietnam in 2001, but emerging from military reports from Marines in service in 2003, it shows that MK-77 was used. The incendiary bomb MK-77 does not have the same composition as napalm, but it has the same destructive effect. The Pentagon has informed us that these devices are not generally used in areas where civilians are present. I didn't lose my seat. I deliberately stood down because I didn't want to be part of a government that was conducting an illegal and bloody war against people who'd done us no harm whatsoever. Uh, at the beginning of the bombardment of Iraq, there was an admission by the American military that they'd used a substance similar to napalm uh, when they first went into Iraq. I put the question down and as you can see the reply was no they hadn't or they were not, my government were not aware of it and so I did pursue it even when I stood down from Parliament and months later we did get an admission from the Ministry of Defence from the Minister himself that a similar substance to napalm had been used in the bombardment of Iraq. A UN convention signed by the US had banned napalm. Is MK-77 very different? No, it isn't. It has exactly the same effect when it uh, is fired at people. It burns them, it destroys things, it melts bodies. It's exactly the same effect. And what, and what of course, what is in a name if it, uh, if it does this to people? I think the Americans are wrong to use it. I think my government are wrong to help in the cover-up of it being used. But, of course, in this war, we've seen the United Nations uh, Charter broken and defied over and over again. Why didn't the United States ever sign the convention abolishing these weapons? Well, the United States, of course, do that. They go around lecturing the rest of the world on their rights and responsibilities and have taken note of what the UN said. Of course, they had a lot to say to the Iraqi government about obeying United Nations resolutions. They themselves think they are above it. This war started with the intention to look for weapons of mass destruction. Is it not paradoxical that chemical weapons were in the end used by the United States? Absolutely. The hypocrisy is absolutely stinking. Uh, th there were no weapons of mass destruction. This was a broken back dictator who was a threat to no one. And uh, they, uh, in my view, uh, the Americans wanted to control the oil in the region. The information coming out of Fallujah is dangerous. The few who try to show it know something about that, like the manifesto journalist Juliana Skrena, 
who was kidnapped carrying out an inquiry into the refugees of the city. Did you gather any particular information about Fallujah? Not only in Fallujah, I had heard stories from the inhabitants about the use of certain weapons, like napalm, in Baghdad during the battle at the airport in April 2003. And then I had collected, just before going to interview the city refugees, testimonies from other inhabitants of Fallujah about the use of guns on white phosphorus. In particular, some women had tried to enter their homes and they had found a certain dust spread all over the house. The Americans themselves had told them to clean their houses with detergents because that dust was very dangerous. In fact, they had some effects on their bodies, bleedings and very strange things. 